Thank you, dear friends and viewers, for being here. It's good to know that the lockdown is being lifted and the world is gradually getting back on its feet. However, we must not take what has happened for granted by thinking that it's all over. We still have to be on our guard and not be careless. We need to walk carefully. The question to ask ourselves at this time is, what next? Now that the nations are opening up, the lockdown is being lifted, what next? If you ask my friend and brother, Ogar Risk, what next? He will tell you from a risk perspective. If you ask my coach, John Maxwell, what next? He will be speaking to you from a leader's perspective. So what next? It's time to build hope. To build hope in or out of crisis is to reason out of the box. For instance, if there was an outbreak of fire, what will you do? Maybe this will be what somebody will do. First and foremost, locate the place where the fire is. Two, arrange for firefighters to get there. And when the firefighters get there, they try both to contain the fire and to put it out. To contain meaning not allowing it to spread beyond where it is and putting it out at the same time. They get as many as possible out to safety. So as many people as are held in the fire, they try to get them to safety. Medical experts and counselors are brought in to help and assist those who are distressed. Then the process of rehabilitation begins. Then the process of investigation begins. And at the end of it all, there is a report. I'm sure you will agree with me that it would be not reasonable to send the police to investigate the source of the fire while the fire was still on without sending the firefighters to put out the fire. So the time of crisis is not a time to be distracted. It's a time to be focused. And the focus must be on getting results. And that is why it is important for you to have a right perspective for you to get the right result. As a coach and counselor, I have come across people who are hurting and find it difficult to speak out to get help because some persons they have spoken to rather than comforting them and lead them out of their trouble have caused them more pain. However, it is important to speak out and get help. As the scripture puts it, that in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Meaning that there is safety when you get good counseling. So how do I build hope in time of crisis? You have to be able to identify what your perspective is in any crisis. If you are not able to identify what your perspective is, you cannot think out of the crisis. So you, when you define what your perspective is, it will help you to decide how to respond. So the purpose of hope here is to give you the strength that you require for performance. So how do I proceed from here? Number one is to define what the crisis is to you. When you are able to define what the crisis is to you, it helps you also to define, number two, what the crisis is not. Number three is to determine what is the life cycle of this crisis? Does it have a lifespan or is it something that goes on? It would be unwise to plan, to have a short-term plan out of a crisis when the crisis will last for a longer time, when the crisis may last a man's lifespan. So it is rather important to be able to determine or define 
what the life cycle is to be able to have the proper planning. So you have a short-term plan and a long-term plan. Four, what does this crisis mean to me? Life or death? Down or up? Out or in? So you have to find what, what it means to you. Number five, how is this likely to end for me? To advance my course or to break me and bring me into a setback? Six, can I do anything to change the outcome? If the outcome is to advance my course, what can I do? That's number seven. What can I do to make it better? If the, if the outcome is a setback, what can I do to mitigate the setback, either to reduce it or to stop it from happening? Number eight, when do I start? When do I put, start putting my thoughts in action? Number nine, do I have what it takes to start? And number 10, if I don't have what it takes to start, who can help me? So do I need help? Do I need to get help? So who can I identify to help me? And number 11, it's a big question. Should I fear? The answer is yes. There is no need to run away from the fear. There is no need to pretend as if there is no fear. Because there are two sides to fear. There are two angles by which fear can walk in a man. Fear can lead you to think and think better. At the same time, fear can lead you to think and think wrongly. So also, fear can help you to take a leap for safety or otherwise. Number 12, what should my fear do to me? My fear is to help me to think. So I'm here again today to challenge you, to challenge your thinking, to challenge your reasoning, to ask you, how are you thinking? It does not matter what the crisis is. Because life, from time to time, is full of crisis. There is never a time in life that a man is left without troubles. In this world, we will find trouble. There will always be trouble. But again, there is something in every man that God has created in him. That is the ability to think creatively to overcome his troubles. As I said in the last video, the fact that you don't have an answer or you don't have a solution now does not mean there is no answer or there is no solution. There is an answer to your situation. There is a solution to your situation. It's just that you have not found out what it is. I will continue another video. Thank you.